In this episode, we talk about who IFS Cloud is not suited for. Let's get into it. Hi there, welcome to part three of a 10 part series on everything you need to know about IFS Cloud. I'm Devin Hennig with Select Hub, and I'm here to give you a detailed tour and my honest, unbiased opinions about IFS, its platform, its pricing, its alternatives, and more. In this episode, we answer the question, who is IFS not suited for? Let's get into it. Here are three scenarios in which IFS may not be a perfect fit. Scenario number one, industries outside of IFS's six focus industries. That means that companies that aren't in aerospace and defense, manufacturing, construction and engineering, energy, utilities and resources, telecom and service industries may not be the best fit. Scenario number two, smaller businesses and enterprises. Smaller companies with simpler operations may find IFS cloud too comprehensive and complex for their needs. And Scenario number three, companies needing advanced CRM, HR, and marketing automation functionality. While offering many features found in CRMs, HR systems, and others, IFS is not necessarily best of breed in any of those categories. While it incorporates features that facilitate management of customer relationships, HR, and marketing tasks, its core strengths lie elsewhere aiming to provide a cohesive ERP rather than excelling as a specialized tool in advanced CRM, HR, and marketing. There you go, three of the main scenarios in which IFS Cloud is not a good fit. Next up, we cover features, a much meatier topic. For the rest of this series, including the full review and IFS alternatives, check out the links in the description. If you're at the point you just wanna to talk to someone or see IFS in action, get a demo in the description or download our ERP resources. They're great if you're still in the research phase of your buying journey. All right, folks, that's it, that's all. Have a good one. Cheers.